Hi, this is Deb Watson, and I'm going to show you how to paint a long-haired dog and make it look realistic when the fur is all one color. I'm going to start out by showing you the colors we're using. We're using a limited palette and mixing some of these colors to make all the colors we'll need to paint the dog. I mix my own black with the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna. I'm also mixing ultramarine blue and the red to make a violet. The dog is mostly a yellow-orange color, and violet is the complement of yellow. So adding violet to any of these dog colors will make them darker and richer. You can see that I'm getting a lot of different color it's ready to go. And then I always test them out to compare them to my photo to make sure I think they're going to work. Now let's add some, some of that violet to those golden brown colors. You can see that it gives you a nice, rich, dark brown. It's a very warm dark. If you want a cooler dark, you can take that black mixture and mix that with some of your regular dog colors, and that'll give you a cooler dark. And you can see these are all the colors we need for this pup. In order to see where the lights and darks are, a black and white copy may help you. But when I start, I'm going to start with the darkest part so that I establish my darks and I can judge the rest of the values by the dark eyes. Watercolors tend to look a lot darker than they're going to dry. They dry very light. So while I'm painting, if you're thinking, oh my goodness, that's going to be way too dark. Just wait until you see it when it's dried at the end. The face is the most important part. For the eyes and the nose, I mostly just paint them black. And then when I get the rest of the pup done, I'll lift up a few highlights. So I'm starting with the, the face is really the focal point. The face, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, they're the most important. Even though this is about the fur, you'll notice that while I'm painting the areas with short fur on the muzzle, I'm doing very short brush strokes. I'm using a size six brush. This is a pretty small little dog portrait. And there's a lot of gray in the white of the muzzle. There's really not much white in this at all. But I am keep referring to my photograph. I keep it right beside there. So I can tell if I want the area that I'm painting next to be darker or lighter, more brown, more gold, And having a clear view of what I want to do makes it a lot easier. Now I'm moving on to the long fur areas and I'm going to be using some much longer brush strokes. I'm 
Most students are pretty surprised that I would use a lot of the violet while I'm painting a yellow gold or brownish dog. But it really gives you the best colors for your shadow areas. This pup has beautiful eyes. And I just like the way that she has the picture cropped. It keeps all the attention on the face. If you take my Craftsy class, one big advantage to taking the online class is that you can post questions or discussions at any time and I'll always get in and answer them within a few days. The owner of this pup had asked, how can you make it look realistic when the dog is all one color? One thing I noticed was that there is a shadow. There's a shadow from the muzzle down underneath. Now the shadow, see it's getting lighter as it moves away from the muzzle and warmer. And when I paint the long fur, I'll make sure that a few of the fur strokes go through the shadow so that my shadow doesn't look like a big black hole. But that shadow does give it a lot of three-dimensional depth. So I hope that helps answer the question of how to make realistic fur when it's all one color. It's not really all one color. It's just that the gradations and the changes are fairly subtle. But using the fur color and its complement will make it easier for you to accomplish your goal. So if you want to paint your pet, Check out my Pet Portraits in Watercolor class at Craftsy.